Hey everyone, Tapan Sharma here and in today's video, we'll be looking at a really amazing log viewer package called log viewer. So it's named log viewer and we'll be looking at how we can install it, configure it and different ways where we can provide access to the users. Like um, if we only provide, want to provide access to admins or provide access based on a certain keys. So we are going to look at this package properly and understand how everything works so without any further delays let's get started so the first thing that we want to do is i have my terminal opened and what i want to do here is i want to install a fresh laravel project so compose or create and i have auto completion so what i want to do is log viewer i'm going to name it log viewer let's enter and I'll be right back once this finishes installing. So a fresh Laravel version has been installed. And now what I want to do is I want to go to that directory and open up my code editor. And now let's go ahead and look how we can install this package. Let's copy it, open up our terminal and let's paste the installing code. So, and one of the requirements for this package is since this is a relatively new package, it does require you to have uh, latest uh, PHP 8 installed and also Laravel 8 or above. So keep that in mind. And we can do is we can publish the files. So the way we do that is by executing this command. Let's open up. Okay, I need to close this up and my code editor. Let's clear it and hit enter. So now the file has been published and also want to spin up new server for our project. That's done. So what if you want to configure the route and authorizing access and everything? So we'll be looking at these. So by default, the log viewer is available at log viewer. So I'll just open up log viewer first. I think we don't have any. So how do we check that out? maybe we can do okay it doesn't throw that i guess okay so i manually created a log file to so that our app throws an exception where i just called a student model which doesn't exist so what we can do here is we can actually filter them by the error types and we also have dark mode support so it's by default system so i'm gonna keep it i think yep that's fine next step what we are going to do is we are going to change this to another route to, in order to do that we need to go to the config log viewer package let's open up that, that up log viewer so we can also enable or disable the log viewer depending on the environment and everything so we can access that from the environment variable as it is referenced in here so route domain route path we can change this so this is quite simple i can type in logs and then now i can access the logs here so that's pretty simple and other thing that we want to look at is we can also configure the domain so like if you have a certain project where you are using a subdomain in that case as well like front end and back end are separate for so but in the same domain so for that you can configure that as well and the next thing is we can use middlewares so let's say we have a middleware for admins and we only want to let the admins access the route then in that case we can define the admin middleware so we haven't defined any middleware in our case i just wanted to show you that we can also define this according to the middlewares so that's done i think i should remove that otherwise it will throw an error yep so we can remove this and that's pretty simple as well so access to the log viewer so we can enable disable that as we already talked about it we can authorize the users we can use the auth callback and then authorize the users accordingly so let's say what i'm going to do is i'm going to access the log viewer facade and copy this code okay we don't have that maybe we need to define okay in the boot of the app service provider what we can do is define the access so we need to import that and the comment is not so good return true or false so depending on the request to user or if you are using any guard then let's say if we have an admin guard 
check so we need to return this thing so check either returns true or false and this function also accepts either true or false so depending on that we'll have access we'll get access to the log viewer so in this case this will return false or probably throw an error because admin guard doesn't exist so yep this is one of the ways where you can authorize the access to the log viewer another thing there's one another example where if the user has includes an email of john either example.com only then it will be given access to the log viewers and we have multiple other types of access as well like viewing the log viewer downloading providing access to download delete so we'll be looking at that as well so by default i think it so we can also add authentication related middlewares in here so like web auth we have already talked about this and if you are using this party permissions package then you can check out the discussion in here and yep this is the last section where if you want let if you want to let the user to download the files or download the log folder or delete let them delete the log files so depending on different types of access we can define those rules as well i also want to include one more check that is if the in the url if we provide a certain key in that case we'll let them access the logs so how do we do that that should be pretty simple i guess so let's go to the log viewer.php and define a new value let's say we have a key and i'm gonna paste a key in here so this is just a randomly generated key and now i want to what i want to do is i want to check whether the request key is equal to the key that we define in here and then provide the access accordingly so how do we do that so if the request key is equal to the config log viewer dot key only then we'll let them access so this will return either true or false you can also include triple equal so that it will also check the type so now let's go to the logs reload so now we are unauthorized so in order to access this thing what we need to do is we need to provide a key with the value of the key that we copied and now we can access all the logs so this is something which i implemented in my previous project implemented this thing so i wanted to share with you so with the help of sort of certain key we can let them access the logs and we also discussed there are other multiple ways so if you want to provide certain access like authorizing downloads deleting files so depending on that you can define multiple logs so these these all should be defined in the boot method itself so yep this is a really good package and i'm definitely going to use this package in all my other projects as well so that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one